Yo everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel, welcome back to another video, and welcome to Premier League Predictions. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe if you are new, we're on the of 500 subscribers, and we're actually under 50 away from hitting it before the end of the year, and uh, make sure to follow all the socials, GVO Mics on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm joined by an OG guest on the channel, if you're an OG on the channel, you already know who he is, it's man like Jay, my mate Jay, how are you doing bro? Yeah. I, I I'd like to say that most of the OGs won't know me because they've seen me for one video, but um yes, <laughs> I'm back. Um yeah. first time on camera for god knows how long. But yeah, 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 it's really good to be back. Um good to do Premier League predictions with you. I know you tried to ask me to do it last year, but obviously yeah. I was doing my own thing on my own prediction show. So mm. yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, man. Uh, obviously two years ago, guys, we did this uh on a shitty camera that I bought, but we, it was a good video at the end. And we, I think I ended up getting many of the predictions wrong, as you guys already know on the channel. But we're going to go through 20 uh, from 20th place to first place, pretty much uh, of our predictions. And you guys already see the championship predictions by now. Um, yeah, let's start 20th place, bro. I want you to start. Who do you have in 20th? I, I think we've both got this team. I mean, to be fair, I don't know, to be fair, but I've gone with Ipswich. Um, mm. I think it's obviously it was a nice story for them to come up. Obviously, Scott McKenna and all the, all and all those players all coming up from the championship for the first time in God knows how long. But I think this way will maybe be just a step too far for them. I think mm -hmm. the main objective for them is to just you know make sure they're solid at home. You know, don't exactly do a Sheffield United and concede like over a hundred goals or whatever. Yeah. And you know, just make sure you get into this championship in somewhat stable condition yeah i've gone with actually someone different i've okay. gone with i've gone with leicester the reason why i've gone with leicester wow yeah um i've been quite public on the lack of hope i have for leicester city the reason why i say this is because their manager left for chelsea and was played a certain style of football that got the best out of their players steve cooper comes in now and yes he's been in before but he doesn't really suit what the profile players are, you know, mainly good at, in my opinion. And also, they're facing a points deduction, I think. I'm not too sure what or whether... Yeah, there was rumours of that earlier in yeah. last season. And uh, I don't think they'll have enough. I think their defence is too slow. They have uh, they didn't get Callum Doyle. They didn't extend his loan. They've got Vestergaard and Woot Fies and Connor Cody as their centre-back options. Um, Connor Cody's a good player. Uh, yeah. But Overall, I don't think their back four is good enough. I think they're going to concede a lot of goals. Um, I think Wilfred Ndidi is done in the Premier League. I think Harry Winks is done in the Premier League and it has their midfield options. They've lost Dewsbury Hall. Fatawi and Mavadini yeah. are good winger options. They've signed Buonanotte on the loan today as well. Uh, those are good yeah. winger options. I don't think they have the striker uh, to survive either. Even though Jamie Vardy is a, a cult hero yeah. of the Premier League, I don't, I, he's done out now. Dak is not a, the greatest of options either. Um so I've not really got much hope for Leicester City, if I'm being completely honest. That's why um, I've put them 20th. I've put them 20th. Yeah, that's, so. that's fair. I mean, I've yeah. heard a few people. I've heard a few people that have said Leicester could be could be 20th, but I haven't put them as low as you. But I'll get into mm. my reasons why afterwards. All right, all right. I'm going to start with the 19th position. Uh, again, this this could be controversial. Uh, I've got Boot Brentford. I think. They're wow. Good. I this think Brentford is... are done. This is not how I thought this would go, by the way. I, I <laughs> forgot how I forgot we did this two years ago and you did put some out there once, but I respect you for it. Go on. <laughs> Joy is that didn't work last time as well. That, that's the funny Yeah, part, I know, but that's the thing. But he ha it hasn't changed. <laughs> I put, I think with the, two years ago, I put like Tottenham third, I put Arsenal sixth. I, 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 did, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I did not ask them we're going to become title challengers in that season and all that, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got Brentford. The reason why I was looking at it today, and I've actually said in my in my Premier League countdown series and for other teams as well that certain teams won't get relegated. But I've said that for nearly every team apart from Leicester. And I was looking at it today, and I was thinking, with the teams I actually think will stay up, it's mainly because of other stuff that I'll get into later. But with Brentford, mm -hmm. I think they haven't done enough in the transfer window. And the, the player they bought is actually out for months. Now, they have somewhat yes, full stability. Yeah, with that uh, Brazilian strike. I forgot his name. But uh, uh, he is Tiago, Igor Tiago. Yeah, Igor Tiago. And um, I don't get me wrong, I rate their manager. 
I rate the manager tactically and stuff. Yeah. The whole Ivan Tony's thing, you're still hanging over their head. Brian and Bruno's yeah. a good player, but I almost think we saw glimpses last season where when they became too injury prone and when they had a lot of injuries, their squad became a, a, so much depleted that I think it's very key to look at the back end the teams has formed from the previous season because they usually carry into the next season if they co- if they are with the same regime, etc. And I think this may be a, a season too much for them. As much as they've got good players and they shouldn't go down, um, they weren't that far away from going down last season. And I just think, I don't know how many players are back, but I don't think it's, I think they need to switch it up a bit when approaching uh, certain games. I don't think they can live off, you know, two two seasons ago where they were really hard to be at home and stuff like that. I don't think they're going to be that hard to be at home. I think their home record is going to get shattered this this season compared to the two previous seasons or maybe the three previous seasons that we've seen with them in the Premier League. And don't get me wrong, I don't want them to go down, but I think it's season two too big for them, in my opinion. Who have you gone with at 19th? I've gone with one of the other promoted sides, unfortunately, um, in Southampton. Um, mm. To be fair, this one, I, I apologise Southampton fans as well, because it is a little bit harsh, considering, obviously, they came up through the... Um, obviously, it was a surprise to me they got... Was it automatic promotion or...? No, they came through the playoffs, playoffs, playoff final. Playoffs, yeah, sorry. It was surprised to me when they came through playoffs. And to be fair, they've signed a few experienced players. Adam Lallana, for example. Um, Flint Downs, obviously, who came from your club. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say it's all bad, but again, I would give the same reasoning for Ipswich, you know, maybe a little bit step too far. Obviously, I know it's their first season back in about two or three seasons. And I think when they came up around 2015, 2016, they managed to stay in for a few seasons. But I think one of the main things with the Premier League now is the promoted clubs have, I thought the gap between the, all the promoted clubs and the rest is so massive, they won't be able to catch up. But They've kept their squad together. They haven't lost too many of their good players. Like, you know, obviously Stuart Armstrong's gone, who is long-time servant there. I haven't. I wasn't exactly convinced when they signed um, Ben Berrett and Diaz, from, uh, who was on loan at Sheffield last season. Um, mm. I wasn't exactly convinced by that. So I think the goals will be the main main problem for them. Not saying that they won't. They'll, they'll definitely provide a few shocks in some match days. But again, similar to Ipswich, I just don't think it will be enough. For to keep them in Premier League, so I've gone with them at 19. Fair enough, man. We've gone with two different uh, teams each on 19. Before we get into your 18th place, guys, make sure to follow Jay on TikTok. He literally says it right there on his name, AFC J Jones X11. Make sure to follow him on TikTok as well. He posts a bunch of football stuff as well, so make sure to go follow him. And uh, you'll yeah, also if you guys, see... yeah, go sorry, on. I was just gonna say. Any, uh, I'll be doing every single football predictions for uh, the Premier League, the Champions League, and also just fantasy football content there. So, yeah, if you guys want to follow, please do. Um, literally says it on the screen. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned fantasy football. Guys, go on the community page and follow the GVO Mike's community or enter the GVO Mike's community FPL uh, league. There's a few people have joined. I would say about... 10 to 12 people are joined so if you guys want to come and join before game week one make sure if you join after game week one you're fucked pretty much uh because you're probably going to finish last but also you're, you guys are seeing this on either sunday or monday we're recording this on friday at 3 30 so if transfers yeah. have happened since then you can't blame us listen we, we're recording it in advance but let's get into your 18th place jay who have you put at 18th I feel like I've been very basic by doing this, but I've already put Le- I This is where I put Leicester. Now, for your, you were saying about um, obviously they're losing their best players. Um, Ian Acho has gone. Brighton's gone. Dewsbury Hall, of course, is already gone. And the only real replacement that I can see that's with actual value is Deco Dover Reed from Fulham. Again, not the most exciting sign in, but um, watching them in the Enzo Maresco was exciting last year, but obviously now that he's gone and I agree with you, Steve Cooper isn't exactly the most exciting man to take them forward. Not saying that Leicester City, especially at the King Power Stadium, won't be a fortress, but I don't think they'll be miles off as far... Because I know you put them last, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Like I said already before, I know I'm kind of repeating myself here, the gap between the promotion clubs and the others is so big, but I think if there was anyone that I could put outside of them it would be Leicester just mm. because you know it surprised me when they got relegated what a couple seasons ago because you know it kind of just caught everybody off guard but 
yeah, I just think they've got a little bit of experience there, which may get which may get them over the line in some games. But I think with all the other teams that I've got here, it w- it wouldn't be right for me to put them for the relegation zone. So sorry, Leicester, you have to go back down for me. Yeah, that's the thing. Like before, I get onto my 18th place. I think with Leicester, the reason why I put them bottom as well is because they're they're the most underprepared out of the promoted teams, in my opinion. Like. Um, they the other two teams kept their manager. Kieran McKenna was obviously linked with Chelsea as well, but he the other was. two kept their manager and they're they're gonna take that momentum straight in. They're also not gonna say make the same mistake as Burnley last season, where they changed the whole core of their squad from the championship to the Premier League. Uh, so that's why mm-hmm. I put Leicester um at bottom as well. But again into my 18th place team, we're sticking with the East Midlands teams. Nottingham Forest, I'm sorry. I think it's a, te- a season too big for you as well. Yeah, and I know that one's controversial as well because of the I wouldn't squad. say so. I wouldn't say so. I think, Joyce, I think a, lot of, a lot of people would put them. I know. I don't think. I think a lot. Of, if you speak to a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a few Nottingham Forest fans out there, but I don't think they would have much expectation more than last year, based yeah. on based on what we've seen. I think it's. I think uh, don't get me wrong. I think Nuno did a good job keeping them up with the points deduction. I think they've got some good yeah. players as well. But I think. Uh, I still think a front three of Hudson Adoy and Anthony Alanga. And listen, if a Wayne is injured, it'll be Chris Wood. Listen, Chris Wood's been a good Premier League striker over the years, but I think there's going to come to a time where he will get figured out and stuff like that. He'll, be a, he'll still be a problem in certain games, don't get me wrong. But I think with a Wayne, obviously, it gives them a bit more dynamism. But Alanga's a moments player. Alanga can give you moments of, I uh, like, showing that he can maybe get take it to the next level, but he can also show you moments of this guy is a relegation battle sort of winger. I think with Hudson Adoy, he's he can never get consistent. As much as I I don't mind him as a player, he can never get consistent. He will give, show you really some brilliant finishes, but show you some terrible moments in one v one situations. And uh, that's my only thing with with uh, Forest. Really, I don't think their defense is that strong. I don't think their attack is that strong. I think it's fairly average overall. Don't get me wrong, Murillo is a good player. I think Sangare didn't show his quality enough last season, but he's a good player. I hope if he doesn't show it this season. And I don't know what's going on. Dominguez is a bit of a quite underrated signing. Obviously, Gibbs White is a good player. Um, and technically, I would say they have better squads than Leicester, Brentford, uh, and Ipswich and Southampton, especially. And I admit you could argue Fulham. Uh, but overall, I, I still don't think it'll be enough. I think going to three seasons in a row as a promoting team in a relegation battle, it's going to take a toll on you once again. There's only so many times where you can do this back to back relegation battle seasons and then still survive once again in the end. Uh, but yeah, yeah if not in the Forest 18th, man, I'm sorry. But listen, I, I, knowing me, if I've predicted you to finish in the bottom three, you're probably going to survive. And if I predicted you to yeah. finish high up at the table, you're probably going to get relegated. That's how it has been on the theme of the channel recently. Uh, I'm going to start the 17th uh, one. Uh, yeah. I've gone with Ipswich. This is where I've put Ipswich. Uh, I haven't put them too high. Um I haven't put them too low either. Uh, with Ipswich, I've talked about them before. A lot of Ipswich fans have recently commented on the videos as well, uh, talking about how confident they are. They think they'll survive. And I think I touched on it a bit earlier with Burnley made the same mistake of changing the whole core of the team. They spent money, but they spent money quite pointlessly. They didn't spend enough money yeah. on defenders um, and they changed the whole core of their team. Like a lot of the times, Murich was being benched. Brownhill, Cullen, etc. All mm-hmm. these players that got the promote. Benson barely played and he should have played for Burnley. Um, with Ipswich, I think they've made smart signings. Now, I don't rate Ben Johnson, but he's a good option to have, I guess, in it w- with the type of level that they're trying to play at. They've already got Harry Clark as well. He's a good right back that can make this step up. My thing is with Ipswich players that have played in the Championship, they're going to already take the momentum and the team spirit on, but they're also, some of them are good enough to up the court to reach that next level in my opinion so the harry clarks of this world the amari hutchinson's that's joined them on a permanent deal the jacob greaves who's a good championship signing murich who played for burnley last season who don't go wrong made his mistakes as a goalkeeper but Ipswich do play uh good football but it's slightly more direct than Bur- burnley's is it's it's also less um it's less like risk adv- it's, it's less risky it's less risky. Like, Murich won't make the same mistakes as he did last season. Leif Davis at left back's a good player. Like, a lot of these players aren't yeah. fashionable names, but they will, they can, they can easily make the step up. So, make Portman Road and 
as such a fortress. I think they're going to have a terrible away record, but I think their home record is going to be really good. I think they're going to really take it to teams as well. And, and their fans are also going to play in a big part in getting them over the line. And that's why I've got Ipswich in 17th. Like they've also made some smart signings. So Hutchinson, Johnson, Greaves, uh, mm. And Liam, Liam Delap is the only City. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liam Delap is the only one where I'm like, I've got a question mark over that, just because he's played mainly in the youth teams and the championship. Um, I don't know whether he can make the step up to be a Premier League striker to keep them up. But in my opinion, even if you're in a relegation battle, yes, you need goals, but you mainly need a defence that can keep less goals than the other teams that are around you. Like we've like we've seen teams survive before with fairly average strikers before. It's not like the twenty tens where you get that cult hero striker that keeps that team up like a Kenwin Jones yeah. for Stoke back in the day and all that. Um yeah. but who have you gone with seventeenth, bro? Seventeenth. Now we were discussing before this video, I had to change um one of my predictions because of some transfer news that I heard in the last mm. hour. And Unfortunately, but I let them kind of get away with this. I've gone with Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's controversial. Now, I want to hear this. Very controversial. Now, the reason why, for those of you who don't know, we've only heard in the last hour that Pedro Neto could be on his way to Chelsea for around 60 million euros, we're reporting. Again, this may not happen by the time this video comes out. It might get cancelled or whatever. But if it were to happen, that is a massive, massive loss on top of the fact that obviously Max Kilman has obviously gone to your club West Ham mm. for a bit for for a decent amount of fees. So, and every time I feel like Wolves have lost one of their star players, I don't think they've reinvested enough into their squad. The mm. main issue I think for Wolves fans was the squad was too small and they weren't able to last the whole season. Mm. And you know, you'd think they'd, they'd be able to fix that this season, but I haven't really seen any outstanding names on here you know they've signed Tommy Doyle Gomez Lima and some Nasta not 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 players that I know of but you know they might turn out for them but I think they're gonna have the same issues as they did last season you know Cunha and Huang were the main two at, at their club and obviously Neto as well but you know there was a time where Huang and uh, Cunha was injured and it kind of you know I guess stopped their progress after a good start to the season last year but I think this season it won't be as as easy for them to stay up. So in my opinion, Wolves are you're lucky for me not to be in the relegation zone. But you know, I think maybe you won't just have an injury prone season. So for me, seventeenth. Who you got with sixteenth? Sixteenth place. I've gone with again linked to what I've heard today. I've gone with Bournemouth. Oh, okay. Now Bournemouth. Bournemouth. It's a shame because I do like Iriola and the work that he's done. Again, it looks like Solanke could be going to Tottenham, which is a shame for them. You know, one of their one of their high value players going, and you know, to pin your hopes on Inashi now, who was okay last year coming off the bench, and Daniel Jebison, who they signed from Sheffield United. Don't know why they did that, but no. you know, he could have an impact. He could he could potentially have an impact there, but you know, I feel like. Bournemouth did very well to stay up. You know, I feel like they got a bit of investment. I think it was last year. Um, so they should yeah. be able to... I'm not saying they won't stay up. Again, they'll be definitely in the relegation zone, I think, definitely towards the start of the season, looking at their fixtures. But again, I think they might just get over the line. But they just... Because they just have a bit, a bit of a better squad than the Leicesters and the Southamptons and the Wolves, like I just said before. <clears throat> Okay, fair enough, man. Let, listen, li like guys, as, as you're watching at home, like these two prediction tables so far have been very different, and I and I have a feeling that's going to be de very different uh, going forward as well. Now we're sticking to the south coast uh, for this one because sixteenth, I've gone Southampton. Now the reason why I, I put care. Southampton uh, to survive as well is because uh, they have a Premier League squad, in my opinion, barring the striker. Uh, they've kept Carl Walker pieces. They'll probably leave eventually. Like whether it's on a free yeah. next season or late in a transfer window, he's going to leave probably eventually. But they signed Sugawara from AZ Alkmaar. He's very highly thought of um, as well. So they've already they don't they don't they're not really suffering with that. And I'm, I'm assuming James Bree is still there as a backup. Uh, with their squad overall, I do think they maybe need to buy another number six if they're not going to trust Shea Charles as the backup to Flynn Downs. Um, obviously, Bella Kochup is going to go. He was never really in their plans. 
Um, yeah. with, with, with the centre back, I think they'll be the opposite where they concede a lot of goals, but they somehow manage to scrape over the line with the attackers that they have. Um, I don't believe in the. I, I actually agree with what you said earlier with the lack of goals, um, because I don't believe in Adam Armstrong being the main guy as your source of a striker in the Premier League. We've seen that he can't do it in the Premier yeah. League, but he can do it in the Championship. The guys, he's had a history of that from Blackburn to Southampton. Um, but I think their football is, as long as they sign a good goalkeeper as well, I think they're linked to Sam Johnston. Uh, I think that'll be a great signing. Um, they, their football is good enough to get them over the line, open up teams, etc. They're going to take a lot of teams by surprise. It's going to be interesting with Russell Martin as well, because he's made the step up from Swansea to Southampton. Swansea yeah. were very... They didn't have the funds to really do anything. And then we well, Russell Martin were, wasn't given the funds. And then he goes on to Southampton and gets them over the line in terms of a promotion place. I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be in a relegation battle, but I don't think there'll be any real panic. They are way more prepared than they were the last time they were in the Premier League where they kept sacking managers and they had Nathan Jones and when after they sacked Hassan Hutu and stuff like that. They had Ruben Sayers uh, as their caretaker and stuff. Um I think Ben Burns and Diaz will actually be quite a good signing, if I'm honest. I think under Sheffield United, he was very restricted because at Sheffield United, and he still made somewhat of an impact. But it's just everyone yeah. around him, apart from Gustavo Harbour, um, I'd say, and that's it, really. Uh, Probably were, McAtee as well, I put in there. Yeah, McAtee, yeah. You'll put McAtee up there as well. Um, apart from them two, no one really had any sort of quality in that team. Uh, but under a side that is going to play on a front foot, he can play everywhere in the front three. He'll be properly settled. I, th- I think they signed him permanently. I'm not too sure. It might have been alone, but uh, he'll, he'll do well there. He'll do well there. He'll make an impact. He always seems to want to prove himself and he hasn't really settled into a club since he left Blackburn, but I think he will this time. But yeah, I've got Southampton 16th. Uh, I think it's by 10 to go to the 15th. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 15th. I've gone with Fulham. I think Fulham at 15th is completely fair. And the reason why I think that is because they won't, they're not really a, going to be in any relegation battle necessarily but they're not really going to hit the any anything higher than 10th I think it's going to be very tough in these places but Fulham have signed some good players obviously Emil Smith-Rowe from your team Arsenal and uh, listen Ryan Sessegnon's a good cheap signing to return back to the club and we'll see how he does obviously they've lost someone actually educated me the Fulham fans educated me on my video on them that William has left and obviously I forgot about Timothy Cassania who's a who's stepped in for Kenny Tete and really stepped up. And they've got good fullbacks. Yeah. They're trying to get Diego Carlos over the line. They'll get some good centre-back signings. They play good, efficient football. They play football that's not too risky and that's not too like restricted as well. Uh, all they need to do, really, is replace Paulinho with a proper player, not Scott McTominay, with a proper player that can play the number six uh, role properly. They've got some good players. And they'll just be, they'll just get over the line. Like, Smith Rowe will bring that star quality as long as he stays fit especially playing in a number 10, and it'll be a huge upgrade on Andreas Pereira. Huge upgrade. Uh, obviously, Rodrigo Munoz, we'll see if he can carry on this purple patch with, throughout the start of the season as well. Um, they've got, I don't know whether Carlos Vinicius will stay. Uh, and yes, losing Bobby D could overread. There's a long-term server there. He'll be a good signing for Leicester, but they've got the, they've got enough wingers uh, just to keep them up. But Dharma Traore is not the best, but he'll keep them up. Uh, they, w- they won't even really be in a relegation battle. They'll just be stable, in my opinion. They'll just be there. They'll just stay there. They'll just gain some form of stability. They've got some good players. I like Anthony Robinson, the left back. Bernd Leno's done well. There's a keeper. Mm. He has his moments, but he's done well there. As I said, Castagna, I like Harrison Reed. Um, we'll see what Rodrigo Munoz brings as well. But yeah, for, I think 15th is a very full in position this season. So yeah. But who have you got with 15th? I've gone Forest. Um, obviously, I know you said they were going to get relegated. I think. I do agree with you that they were lucky last season not to be relegated, especially with the points deduction. But something's convincing me that I feel like Nottingham Forest, because I've seen over the last few seasons they've invested heavily, like the especially the owner's been very passionate about making sure they stay in the Premier League. And mm. I do I slightly disagree with them saying that they will get away with it this time. I do believe that the front three of Ilanga. Obviously, I know Chris Wood isn't the most exciting player, but, you know, there were moments where he did show his quality, you know, for example, that hat-trick against Newcastle. So yeah. I do think they do have it in them if they can all stay fit. You know, they've got Chris Wood still there, Awanyi still there. You know, they've done well, I think, to keep Hudson Dyke and Elanga. I really do rate Cribs White. I think he is, you know, I think he deserves better than Nottingham Forest, but, you know, he's doing a great job there as is. So, again, I... 
they will still concede a lot of goals, but not as much as all the other teams that I've got listed below them. So, you know, for me, I think Forest will do enough to stay in the Premier League, but maybe in future seasons, maybe it won't be the case. OK, uh, who have you got by 14th? 14th, I've gone Brentford. Um, I know you, again, another team you put in the relegation zone. I was convinced, I was I was very worried at the start because I genuinely thought Brentford could potentially go. But I feel like if they don't have another injury crisis, I think they'll be OK. And I think it would be very bad luck of them to have two injury crises in a row. I think the way they approach games, especially against the bigger teams, you know, they switch their three at the back and they go 3-5-2. And then obviously against the, the teams that they feel like they can beat, they go 4-3-3. I think that has worked in the seasons that they've been here so far. But I, I don't think the team has changed much. I know obviously you spoke about the Ivan Tony situation. I don't know whether he leaves or not. I don't think it will affect them too much. I think Thomas Frank and the squad overall are mature enough to... I guess, move on from that situation and not let it affect their performances too much. So I think for Brentford fans, I think I'm sure they'll be worried after what they saw last season. But for me, I don't think they have too much to worry about unless, you know, they start the season really poorly like they did again last season. But for me, I think 14th for, for Brentford. OK, 14th, I've gone Everton. Now, I think, yeah, as I said before, um, in the in the Everton Premier League countdown video, um, I think I, I put the question is are Everton in trouble or going under the radar? The reason why I say that is because there seems to be quite a bit of negativity sometimes within their preseason, but they're actually not having a bad window. Now, my only thing, uh, and no. Everton fans seem to agree with me in the comments uh, with my overall analysis of them, but with uh, Lindstrom is not a bad signing as well. I think that's a good signing, but. My other, my only other thing is if you you got to move on from the Wilfred Nonzo situation because he's probably not going to leave Leeds after the let, letting go of Somerville. Um, I think they yeah. need to find another winger that's right footed just to give them a bit, a bit uh, something a bit different. They've got Harrison, they've got McNeil. Get someone else to get someone else, just a bit, a bit yeah. more dynamism on the wing. The Calvert Lewin situation, like they're not going to find too many goals from Calvert Lewin because he's going to spend more time on a medical bench. Uh, and Beto, we'll see what he's like this season as well. Because after settling in his first season, it's a bit of a, a sticky situation around him with how good he can actually be. Uh, but they've got the defence as well. Jacob Bryant's a good signing with Tarkovsky and Bradway is the other options at centre-back. They're going to keep it tight. They're not going to concede many goals, but they won't score many goals either. They're not going to... Without a points deduction, uh, they would have done quite well last season. If you take away their points, yeah. they would have finished way higher. I think they're just stable. I think they're stable. They can't spend too much, but they're not having a bad window either. They're not having a terrible window. They could do with a couple more signings. It's not the worst squad in the world. Um, they won't be good to watch or anything, but that's not what it's about, really, when you're in a situation that Everton are in. It's just about keeping stable for now. Obviously, you probably want... I get, uh, As I said in the video, I get why people would uh, would be completely happy with Sean Dyche uh, with uh, his track record, but I also completely understand that if you want a manager that can give you something different to get maybe more out of your squad with better coaching and maybe a different ideas, etc. as well. Uh, I think Sean Dyche is doing all, it, all that he can with within his realm. I don't think he can coach uh, anything different that he already hasn't done already. But I think Everton 14 is fair. I think uh, they won't get relegated, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll just be there. They're not going to go anything higher than 12th, but 14th, I think. Um I think it's my turn to go 13th. Yeah. 13th, I've got Wolves. And the Pedro Neto thing doesn't yeah. affect it for me. The reason why it doesn't affect it for me is because Pedro Neto barely plays for them. Now, he gives you that star quality, but he spends a lot of time injured. So they've yeah, had to prepare without him a lot of the time anyway. But also, with the signings that they made, and I've watched them once in pre-season because they played against us, they are changing yeah. to a four at the back, and I think they'll concede a lot more goals. However, with the football that they will play, it's a lot more front-footed. It's a lot. It's better on the eye. They've played, they they have technical, technically secure players. That midfield of Jao Gomez and Mario Lamina is very underrated. Very underrated. Yeah. They, they know each other really well. Good chemistry and stuff. I I think they'll concede a lot of goals due to the fact that 
Pedro Lima is a good signing. Nelson Semedo has really improved for them. But down that left hand side, eight Nori in a back form, I'd, I'd be a little bit concerned about. I think he's a good wing back and maybe could potentially be a good winger. But as a left back in a back four, I'm not too sure. Now, I know they're not really affected by the Max Kilman situation, judging by the reaction from their fan base. But uh, they've got, I think their centre backs are okay. They're nothing more than that, in my opinion. I think Totti Gomez is all right. Dawson's all right. Of course, I know Dawson from the West Ham stint and watching him from his time. Obviously, he's done a good job there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Gary O'Neill does with this whole new formation idea. He clearly wants to get more out of the attacking talent that he has. Uh, obviously, with Cunha and Huang as well. Cunha's a really good player. It's just they don't have a 20-goal a season, man. But they don't have players that are like not prone to scoring goals. Like They, they will score goals, but it's just... They won't score enough to finish any higher than uh, 13th, in my opinion. But who have you gone with 13th? Yeah, 13th, I've gone Everton. Um, mm. I agree with you. Very stable team. Um, did very well last season, especially to stay up, and deservedly so. I thought Sean Dice did an amazing job. Um, I agree as well. Won't be the most exciting team in the Premier League, but will do more than enough to stay up. I think they did very well to keep um, Brathwaite for the likes of United. I think... It was fair that they set the price of around 60, 70 million considering the market these days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the fact that they've added little pieces to it, I think it was a shame for them to lose, obviously, Onana, but obviously they need the money to keep up with the, the profit and sustainability rules. So a bit of a shame for them. But I think, again, if Everton can do what they did last season, I don't think Everton fans should have anything to worry about, which I know over the last few seasons you wouldn't, wouldn't believe because obviously we talked about um, them potentially getting relegated, which would have been the worst case situation, especially if they were moving to the new stadium. But yeah, nothing to worry about for Everton for me. So for them, they stay 13th for me. Who have you gone with at 12th? At 12th, I've gone with Brighton. Um, Brighton and Hove Albion. I've, I can see you're not convinced by that. Just carry on, carry on. The, no, I mean, the, a new young manager... Bold, I would say, but then again, Brighton are known for that these 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 days. So, um, yeah, a good a good couple of little signings kept the likes of Matoma, kept the likes of Adingra. I know Matoma was injured for a lot of last season, but I do like the squad that they've kept together. I don't know if the young manager, you know, they're his first time in the Premier League, don't know much about him, so it might be a little bit of a struggle for him. I think Brighton, obviously, with Europe last season which was the main reason why they regressed so much. So I think this is kind of a, I guess, a building year and just keeping it stable. So, yeah, for me, Brighton, 12th place. Guess what, Jay? This is the first time that we've agreed on a position because I've got with Brighton and 12th. Oh, That's why oh, I look Fair like, enough. They, that's why uh, I made that enough. look. Yeah, good, uh, job. good job. <laughs> but, yeah, Brighton at 12th, like, I, I completely agree. Like, I don't know anything about the new manager. I just know that he's going to play good football because it's Brighton. Um, with the squad that they have, I think they'll again they'll score goals. They'll score goals with the attackers they have. Again, a bit like Brentford, they suffered with a lot of injuries, especially in the same position with Matoma, with Enciso as well. With them two back, uh, they've got and hopefully Evan Ferguson can make that step up in terms of you know being a can hopefully a consistent first team player. Gio Pedro is a good player. He'll he'll do well for them once again. Uh, Danny Welbeck will play his part. Don't know how he's still going. Don't know how James Milner is still going. Uh, but they've also signed yeah, Kozia Dubri. Yeah. They signed Minter, uh, both two good right winger options. I watched Kozia Dubri in a Youth Cup final. And I thought Arsenal fucking cloned Saka. I thought they cloned him. Uh, but yeah, he's yeah he's he's a good player that hopefully can break through the first team. I'll be looking forward to watching him play if he does play. And Minter's a shined up fire and I don't know why Newcastle let him go, but obviously probably because of uh, FFP and PSR and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, they have they have a good enough squad in general. Hopefully they don't let Billy Gilmore go, even though Billy Gilmore's a really good player. I know he's been linked with a, uh, Napoli, uh, so we'll yeah. see how that uh, manages to fold. But I know nothing about their manager. I just know that they have a good enough squad to be nowhere near the relegation zone. But I think due to the fact that they, they had a bit of a dip towards the back end of last season, uh, that could play a part once again. But then again, it's a new regime. We'll see what the new idea is. Uh, intel and stuff. I think Brighton fans will probably be excited about having a new manager again uh, to refresh ideas and they'll be and they'll know that they're stable enough just to see what the season brings for them. Last season was a bit bit of a high in terms of being in Europe 
but now they've got one game a week again. We'll see what they can do. They might finish higher because of the lack of games, but I think 12th is fair. And we've both agreed on that. Uh, 11th, I have gone with Bournemouth. The reason why I've gone with Bournemouth, okay. I believe I believe in this manager so much. I believe in Iriola so much. And the Solanke thing doesn't affect it for me once again because their recruitment team has been so good since the new ownership has come in with the likes of the Coops of Alex Scott. Well, I want to see him fully fit this season, really take the games by scruff of the neck this season. Uh, even with the likes of Justin Clive have stepped up, Semenyo has stepped up. Uh, even J- Jaden Anthony, I, I want to see if he actually plays a part of the season as he was loaned out to Leeds last season. But I, that was a su- surprise to me. Uatara, they've got a lot of attacking options. They're, now is their only number nine. And I think they'll recruit a good number nine to replace Dominic Solanke. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's going to be gutting for them to let him go, but they've also keeping the likes of Zabani, likes of Senesi, yeah. likes of Kirkes. That defence is so good on the ball and just so good in terms of the organisation in general. And th- th- they need to sign a new goalkeeper. Uh, I think Neto, he can't play out from the back and he's not been able to command his box. So they need to sign a new goalkeeper. And they've also signed that Juventus youngster centre-back as well who, to replace Lloyd Kelly. I forgot his name. Something like Hudson or something like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Milos Kerkes is a great player. He was been linked with a move towards Chelsea. Who hasn't been linked with Chelsea? Um, but with Milos Kerkes, he's a good player. And with, after a year of settling into the Premier League, he's only going to get better, especially at 21 years old. So, but we've got a good young squad with some experience there. I think they'll be fine. And uh, they'll, they'll sign a good replacement for Solanke. Their board are actually really good when it comes to recruiting players. I'm really liking what they're doing. And uh, yeah. Props to them. Tenth. Tenth place for me. Tenth. No, I've got to go tenth. Oh, sorry. Yeah, your tenth. Sorry. Not my tenth. Tenth. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be unhappy with this. A lot of you. I've gone with West Ham. I'm sorry. Wow. I know a wow. lot of you guys want me to predict top eight, top six, top four. And I was on the back of the net. You should channel Big Up Matt uh, about talking about top four. Listen. Greater things can happen, but I'm not buying into uh, the first season of trying to integrate all these players just yet, guys. Um, now, listen, Tadebo's about to sign today. I'm hopefully by the time this has been announced, uh, by the time this has uh, come out, that Tadebo's already been announced. Uh, that's a great upgrade, and we need a right back straight away. We've signed pretty much in, in nearly every position that we've needed. Obviously, ideally for myself. I would have let Cresswell go and signed another left back to compete with Emerson. But other than that, I'm really nitpicking. Uh, don't get me wrong, I really like our squad, but we've come off of a back of three years of Moyes ball. And we've had to now try and integrate all these players into a new style of play, which they're going to have to get used to. It hasn't been the best preseason. It's been very kind of underprepared, but I do see what we're trying to do. Uh, I think this manager is good in terms of his ruthlessness. And I think uh, this director of football, Tim Steiner, he's just been so good with recouping these players and credit to him. We trust in Tim Steiner as always on his channel. And we've got a good squad, one game a week, but I'm not expecting anything in the first season. I'm going to trust uh, this manager. I'm going to have some patience unless I see some really bad things tactically or we're in some form of severe underachievement. Other than that, I'm going to trust this manager in his first season. And in the next season, I expect European football. But for now, um, I think there's going to be some rocky roads. I think some players will will play that are not good enough. And then the manager will assess the squad for the next season. Then we'll kick on and get Europe. That is my long-term prediction. But for now, I think 10th is fair. And I'm not going to buy into the dopamine of transfers and stuff like that. I know a lot of you will disagree because a lot of you know guys are just as positive. Well, you're way more positive than I am. So I know you guys are going to predict us to finish eighth and sixth and stuff, but I think that would take time. I think it's going to take time to get back up there, but I'm looking forward to the season still. Don't get me wrong, but I put my own club in 10th. Who have you got with 10th? In 10th place, I've gone... Well, actually, no, I'll do 11th and 10th, because I think I haven't said 11th yet. Have you um, said 11th? No, I don't think I have. Oh, you haven't? No, okay. Oh. No, yeah, I'll do 11th and 10th then. Um, I've gone with Fulham 11th and Palace in 10th. Um, yeah. In terms of Fulham, obviously it hurt me a lot seeing Emil Smith-Rowe go. Yeah. I do have faith that he will make them a, be- a better team and I hope he goes on to do really well there. But I think 
I guess Fulham, again, it won't be an amazing season for them. I think mostly they'll be focused on seeing how far they can go in the Cups, like the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. But in terms of the league, I think it's just more about just improving on last season. You know, they got Ryan Session back, which will be good competition for Anthony Robertson, who I bet very highly. I agree with you in terms of replacing Jablini is going to be difficult. I was impressed with Lukic last season and Harrison Reid. Um, whether they'll be able to make that step up, we'll have to wait and see on that. But, you know, they've also lost their their captain, Tim Ream. I know he signed for, I think, Charlotte FC a couple yep. of days ago. So a big loss for them. But I think, again, another person that I forgot to mention, Moon is up front, was very good last season. Very good to making that step up in place of Raul Jimenez. And, yeah, I, I don't think Fulham or fans will be worried too much. I think this is just a season of let's see how far we can get and let's see hopefully do better than last season. As for Palace in 10th, I was very, very impressed when Oliver Glasner came in last season. Very impressed. And even though Elise has left, I think bringing Ismail Assar does cancel that out majorly because, yes, he was at Watford last season and he was their main guy. But I don't think the step up from Watford to Palace is that far. And I think he'll be able to come back into the Premier League and still be able to ball out and at least get... A, guess maybe around five to ten goals so he'll be able to contribute to them massively um i do also think if they do manage to keep Eze beyond the transfer window i think that will be massively helpful um from what i'm hearing at the moment i don't think many clubs are like close to even getting to him yet so i think the crystal palace fans should have a lot to look forward to so yeah I i've gone with uh firm 11th and palace in 10th Sure. Do your ninth one as well. Do who have you got in ninth? Uh, in ninth place, if I remember off the top of my head, uh, yeah, I've gone with. This is the. I've got to say, from here onwards, was the one of the hardest things I've had to do because yeah. there are so many teams that deserve to be in this place. But ninth place, I've gone with West Ham. Now, it's hard for me because I get why you're a bit more defensive in saying that you don't, now that you've made all these signings, you're going to make top four, et cetera. And obviously with the new manager, it's going to take time. But, you know, when I look at last season, when I saw the likes of Antonio, you know, Bone was having to play up front at some times, there was still that little spark where you had Piquetta and Kudus. And in some games, it looked brilliant. But, you know, I understand why you'd put them 10th because there were some games in the season, like, I don't want to remind you, obviously, the 6-0 to us at home. Yeah. But, you know, I can understand why you think that. But if you do get to Debo over the line, you know, to replace Kurt Zuma, and I do think that's an upgrade, you know, you've got, yeah. and you've got Max Kilman alongside him, I think that's an upgrade. I think the fullbacks, I would say, is the only main issue would for me for you to push forward. But again... I haven't had a chance to watch your preseason, so you would know more than I do. So, yeah, I I think it's very it's very I think they'll be very unlucky not to make top eight, but I would understand because obviously they've got a bunch of players now. Depending on how long it takes them to gel as well, I think that's a big yeah. factor. You know, we've seen at Chelsea, you know, the, the um, they brought a bunch of players in and their team hasn't gelled. Whether um, you'll not have the same issue, we'll have to wait and see on that. But I don't, I don't, I, I think. I think Lopetegui is a good enough manager to get the best out of those players. And I, I do think you'll do it better than maybe you think, but I won't put them in the top eight for now just because of I need to see what Lopetegui can do first. So, yeah, for me, West Ham ninth. We're very close to agreeing again because I've got Crystal Palace ninth. So we pretty much had it the okay. other way around. Yeah. Um, I think, as I said in my video on um, Crystal Palace, in my, in my opinion, are building something special um, under the recruitment uh, strategy of Dougie Friedman, uh, who's obviously quite an icon at Crystal Palace. And he's done really well. And he's been obviously put in high regard. I'm pretty sure Newcastle and Manchester United both wanted him um, and to be in their staff. I think Dougie Friedman's done really well in terms of the recruitment. And Adam Wharton has to get a mention from me because, uh, as everyone knows, I'm the biggest Adam Wharton fan. And I think he's so composed on the ball. And like I love championship talent. I love it when players from the championship can make that step up. And he's he's almost done it the best. And he's only been here for six months. And I think he'll be in most people's team in the seasons next season. 
Uh, I'll go as far as to say that. I think Palace will be in the European battle for a little bit and they'll have the eventual drop-off once they realise that maybe a bit of their depth won't be good enough and I think they'll assess the squad again for the next season and they'll continue yeah. to be in European battles. They've got a very ambitious manager who plays a certain style of football where it's very hard to break down but it's very easy to break down other teams when they're in possession uh, with that 3-4-2-1 formation. I, I think Eze will stay. It's always rumours of Eze going but that no one has actually put in a bid yet. Um, Tottenham always linked with him. They never put in a bid. Same with Manchester City um, as well. Those have been the two teams I've seen really linked with him. Uh, Mark Gay, regardless of him maybe departing for Newcastle or not, they brought in Chani Riyad as their replacement in advance. And they'll still have a back three of Riyad, uh, Richards and Anderson, and maybe Joel Ward in a back three at times, who maybe is not good enough to play right back anymore, but can definitely do a job in a three at the back. Uh, they've got Daniel Munoz, a right wing back, has been very impressive. Jefferson Lerma, who's very underrated. Uh, Mateta has really taken into his form into the Olympics from the purple patch of last season. And we'll see if he can take that straight into another season where he can have a full good season of scoring goals. We'll see if it was just a purple patch or if it's just confidence or whatever it is. But Palace will have a great season next season for their standards. I think them being in a European battle, well, that's, that'll be their best season, even if they don't make it. Um, but they they're building for not for just the, not just for the now but for the future as well. So I think it's very as you said as well. As it, you should be excited if you're a Palace fan right now. And obviously yeah, Ismail Assar yeah. bought him from Marseille. Um, he was at Watford not that long ago. And when you saw him at Watford, he was one of the players that would actually step up and was seen to be good enough. And I think it's a big upgrade on what they what they have. Maybe not on Alise, but on someone like a Jordan Ayew that would play just in behind. He's a big upgrade on that. And a front three of Eze, Mateta and Ismail Assar is a very good front three, in my opinion. They've got Mateus France as depth, Jordan Ayew as depth, etc. Uh, but yeah, re- like with Crystal Palace, the only thing that really concerns me about them is maybe their depth in wing backs and their goalkeeper. I don't rate Dean Henderson. I don't think he can, he can barely catch a ball. And I'm, I'm very uh, surprised that they would sell Sam Johnston over Dean Henderson. I don't think his distribution's all that either. And just in the general as a goalkeeper, I think he's fairly average. But uh, that's just me. I think that would be the only concern. Just depth at wing back and goalkeeper. But other than that, well done to Crystal Palace for how they've recruited over the years. Um, well done to them. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start at eighth place. And uh, the thing is, this shouldn't be controversial, but I, I, I'm just seeing what I, I can only say. What I see, I've gone with Manchester United. I've got, I've got I, I, I can tell you now, I'm not far off. <laughs> We're not too far off on that, but continue. Their manager, need I say any more? Like, their manager, is he's proven to be a good cup manager. He's won two cups. But in the league, can you prove, can you have an, even have an identity on the pitch? Has your coaching staff of the Hake guy, who is a Dutch manager, and the Van Nistelrooy coming in, are they going to improve your playing style by... You are you redoing your coaching stuff, etc. Xerxes is a good signing from what I hear, from what people have said when they've watched him. I've watched Lenny Yoro once. He's injured now for three months. I've watched him once and he, he did impress me, but I've only watched him once. So I can't say too much on him. But those do seem to be improvements on... Listen, it's not really hard to improve on Hoyland and Lindelof or... Like, for Rand leaving, was, it's still a blow, in my opinion, despite his injury proneness, because... Who else do you have in defence? Maguire had a good season last season, but he's not going to make that step up again. You like, and as we're recording this, this is before the Community Shield, and four of their four defenders are, are injured. Wan Bissaka is injured. Luke Shaw is injured again. Uh, Lindelof is injured. I'm pretty sure Maguire has got a knock, and Martinez is injury prone as well. So due to the fact you got so many players that are injury prone, you have so many injuries from last season that will probably carry on into this season. Your midfield is unbalanced. Casemiro's on his last legs. Mason Mount is not good enough. Bruno Fernandes turns up in moments. Rashford turns up in moments. He turns up every two years. Anthony's not good enough. Sancho and Diallo are not going to play. Uh, Hoyland isn't good enough. Dallo and Mainu are the only ones I can see. Like, yes, you've got something there. Lissandro Martinez is a good player, but he's injury prone. So, and with Anana as well, very dodgy goalkeeper last season. I don't see you finishing any any higher than eighth. You haven't done enough in the transfer window. You can't even sell the players that you want to sell. You want to bring in Maserari and are waiting to sell Wan-Bissaka. You want to bring in Delict and are waiting to sell other centre-backs. 
But you need to get a move on. You need to be more ruthless. Terminate some contracts. If you've got the money, you need to do that. You need to offload some players. You, your squad is not that good. Your manager is not that good. So I have no other reason to think to think then you're going to finish eighth and have another underachieving season. You like it's not it's the basic stuff in football as well. Why is the midfield line and the defensive line so far apart in your team? One pass through the lines and the other team has got so much space to attack you. We saw that so many times last season. And I don't see why that would change because at the end of the day, despite the coaching staff that you brought in. Your manager is still Eric Ten Hag. He still makes the final decisions. He's meant to be a coach, but he's coached nothing. He hasn't made anyone better. And don't give me this something about Alejandro Garnacho either, because the guy is just as inconsistent as anyone else in that team. But I've gone with Manchester United eighth. Who have you gone with at eighth? Yeah, can I pause for two seconds while I move just move something? Go on. Yeah, just edit something. Make sure to like the video, guys, as you're watching this as well. And make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow Jay on TikTok as well. Yes, this is nearly an hour, but we're bringing you pretty much a podcast episode of our predictions. This is what we do on this channel. We're bringing you longer form videos, whether that's streaming or pre-recorded as well. All right. Okay. Jay, you ready? Yep, I am back. I have gone. I mean, I might as well do eight and seven because I want to talk about Manchester United. But Go on. Um, I've gone with Spurs 8th and Manchester United 7th. Now, mm. as an Arsenal fan, this may seem very biased and <laughs> I understand that if so. However, Spurs, as I said before, look like they could get Dominic Solanke. However, Archie Gray, the only other notable signing that has come in so far that I've looked up on and... yeah. I think the last season, their main, you know, Ange Postecoglou's first season was very mixed. You know, it started off very well. No one knew about his style of play, mm -hmm. but they figured him out very quickly and he got found out. And yeah. for me, they were lucky to get into Europe for me. And mm -hmm. I haven't seen, you know, it doesn't look like Ange is going to change his like style of play or anything like mm -hmm. that. So I don't think much will change, you know. They've managed to keep Timo Werner, which I'm sure a lot of Spurs fans are not aren't happy with based on his output last season. I guess they've managed to get rid of Eric Dyer and Ryan Sessegnon, Ivan Perisic, etc. Hoiberg as well, he's off. So they've managed to get people off the wage books. The main problem for Spurs fans is where is all that money going? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going to get spent on better players. You know, you've still got... You know, you still got the same Kudzeski. I wasn't impressed with Brennan Johnson last season when he came in. You know, for fifty million, I don't think it was worth it. Um, their defense is a good if the tactics were better, but you know, for me, I just I can't see Spurs doing as much, especially in Europe. You know, we talk about they started so well last season, and you know, they had a massive drop off towards the end and. Unless I, I don't know what I don't know what I can say that will make it make me think, okay, maybe they can get a sneaker top six. But with all the teams that I've got listed above them, I think they're just more consistent. You know, there were times at Spurs where you never where I went to a match day for the so game, for example, the game against Wolves last season. I could have predicted that they were going to lose that two one because that's just what they do. Mm. You know. There were times where they just went 1-0 up and they just let the other team come in and scored another two goals against them. So I do think it will be another frustrating season for Spurs. I could be I could be very, very wrong, but there's too many teams above them just, just about for me. And then Manchester United, I have to agree with everything you just said. I mean, you, you, you were very lucky. To, I, I shouldn't say I would be very lucky. You were very fortunate to win the FA Cup over City but the signings I mean you've managed in I think this transfer window for Manchester United was more about just getting all the dead wood out and they haven't managed to do that because of all the huge rages that are on you know and we could potentially see tomorrow in the Community Shield Casemiro at centre-back again which mm. if he was to say that to Manchester United fans they'd be they'd be in shock because they didn't want they don't want to see that again and we could be seeing McTominay and um, you can see McTominay and Eriksen in midfield again next season, and that's not where they want. 
I do think their new ownership will take them in the right direction eventually, but that will also take time. So I think they will have to lower their expectations. That's not saying they might do well in Europe or may do well in the Cups, for example, but in the league, I can't see them doing much better than they did last season unless we see three or four signings come through the door and that take us by surprise. But as of right now, I can't see them finishing higher than seventh. So, yeah, Man United seventh for me. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my set. I'm gonna talk about seventh. Then I'm gonna talk about sixth. Uh, my seventh place is Newcastle. Uh, I've gone with Newcastle because uh, I think they've made some improvements. Uh, well, in terms of Lloyd Kelly, they needed centre back depth. Uh, simple as that. They've, they're going to keep Anthony Gordon. They're going to keep Isak, of, of course, and they're going to keep Bruno Gimmerich. They're going to keep their best players. But they're also, hopefully, Eddie Howe has learned his lesson to not play Dan Byrne at left-back all the time and to play Lewis Hall. Lewis Hall is very young and dynamic and can bring you so much more down that left-hand side to help Anthony Gordon and it can become a real force next season, especially with Harvey Barnes as a winger option as well if Anthony Gordon's not there, if he can stay fit. They need a right winger. You can't have Almiron and, and Jacob Murphy as your right winger options again. The, you wanted, the Almiron was so close to moving to a move to Saudi. You let Minter go. You've got somebody. You need to sign a right winger. You sign this Osula guy from Sheffield United. I, don't, I think he's just a guy who's going to come in and just be a squad player. I'm not expect. I'm not gonna expect too much from him as a, um, as a neutral. I think your midfield is good enough. You've got Lewis Miley. People forget about Lewis Miley. Lewis Miley's a very good young talent. So Nali's back. We'll see how he does. Gimaresh. Yeah, obviously the Elliot Anderson sale was due to PSR and stuff. I don't think they should have sold him. I, mean, I don't think Longstaff is good enough. But Joel Linton's back. Joe Willock is still there. I like Joe Willock a lot. Um, at right back as well, if Trippier doesn't do that good, you've got Livermento to come in. And if you sign Mark Gay, you probably will finish higher than seventh. Because Sven Botman is injured, I think. I think Sven Botman might be injured again. I don't think so, he's played a game of preseason. No, yeah, so he's probably... I think he picked up a big injury when, after coming back from his previous one. So Lloyd oh, Kelly okay. and Fabian Shai is not a bad centre-back partnership. But adding Gay on, to, on top of that, you would have Lloyd Kelly and Mark Gay as your centre-back pairing. And that is not bad at all. Like that is that is decent. You need a centre back depth, especially from last season. And even if uh let's say a Lewis Hall doesn't do well at centre back, uh a left back, sorry. Lloyd Kelly and Livermento are better left back options than Dan Byrne is at this current moment in time. Dan Byrne is too immobile at this stage, and it would get taken on by any sort of winger that that's got any sort of pace. And yes, sometimes he does have that odd uh, performance where he'll pocket someone one v one, but let's be honest. He's not good enough anymore. But with Newcastle, I think I think they'll bounce back. I think Eddie Howe's a good manager. If we're talking about league titles eventually, which is probably what the Saudi uh, ownership want eventually, yes, he's probably not going to be good enough for that. But to take them into European spaces to finish top four uh, from the fourth to the eighth positions, I think that's his level. And I think he'll be good enough to do that once again, just as long as he doesn't hang on his stubbornness as he did last season, as he was rightly criticised from a lot of tactical thoughts last season. Uh, but I'm going to go with the number six uh, position as well. And I originally had this team fourth, uh, but I, I, they're a mess. They're an organised mess. Chelsea. Fair, uh, fair enough. Chelsea, I have no idea. I never have any idea on what they're going to do. They actually, their, their managerial appointment could be really, really, really good or really, really, really shit. Yeah, like no one knows. Yeah, with Maresca, like I've obviously been in a couple of, of Lewis's streams, uh, watching the preseason games uh, with them, and seeing them in preseason, he doesn't want to play this high line. He wants to have the line slightly deeper, but it's apparently a habit from last season after playing with Pochettino. Now, I actually think that uh, Saki Pochettino wasn't that bad, just because of the fact of. It was a big purple patch last season at the back end of the last six games of the season. And people then take into account of how bad Pochettino was really doing throughout the whole season. They've got Nkunku back, which is going to give them a boost. Enzo Fernandez and Kai Seder will have a guy who, a manager who is actually going to coach on the ball. Pochettino doesn't coach on the ball, he just says run. Romeo Lavia is now fully fit. If As long as you don't get as many injuries as you did last season, I think you'll be okay. I don't think you'll finish top in top four. You, If you don't win the Conference League, I'm going to clown you for the whole week. I'm going to clown you for the whole month. I'll clown you for the whole summer. 
I will not let you forget it if you don't win the Conference League. And so I think you'll finish sixth. I don't think you're... I don't, I don't, don't get me wrong, the top four battle, you don't really need to be that good to finish in the top four. Top four battles are, are very up and down. But I, I don't think you'll have it have uh, what it takes to get over the line. I actually think you have better squads than the teams I have put above you, the two teams I put above you. But um, I just don't know what you're going to bring with this manager. And you have a lot of attackers now. Pedro Neto is going to get over the line. You've got Neto, Mudrick, Madweke, Sterling. You've got the Om- Omicron guy that you signed up from with Jackson. And and then you're going to still try and sign Osimhen. So you've got three strikers and a bunch of wingers. This is going to look pretty much too top heavy. You've got five centre-backs and Chalaba as a sixth if and he's been exiled. You're not going to be able to sell him uh, because nobody's come, come in for him unless Palace do go in with that 25 million bid. And Reese James is going to get injured eventually. Neto will get injured eventually. Kukurea will have a good season. Ben Chilwell won't. But and the goalkeeper situation, we'll see how this Jorgensen guy does as well. But a lot of Chelsea every season is just the unknown. You're not letting your players gel with each other. And then you sign more players. So you're putting so much pressure on this coach. A man who's going to make the step up for the first time since um, the championship. He's only managed the championship in Parma. So we'll see what he does. And he, I, I watched the Leicester teams last season. And they have a lot of their wingers in 1v, 1v1 situations. Apart from Pedro Neto, I'm not too sure your wingers are good enough to be in, in consistent 1v1 situations unless you play in Kunku out there. And Madweke can at times, but it's just an end product. Sterling can at times, but he's a he's a guy who will kill off the the who will kill off certain teams and will have stinkers in other games as well. So that's why I put you guys sixth. I know a lot of you, some of you are really negative about your team. I think you're going to finish like tenth. Some of you are really positive about your team. I think you're going to finish like third or fourth. But I think sixth is fair. Uh, who have you gone with at sixth? Yeah, um, sixth place. I've gone with Aston Villa. Now, when it comes to Villa, obviously, and a fair play to them for getting Champions League last season, I think well-deserved. I don't believe in this. They're going to have a massive, massive drop-off. You know, they managed to get all their signings done early, and that's one of the key things that I think Villa are good at. They're good at getting their transfer deals early. So, yeah. Ian Matson, I think good signing at left-back, even though they've already got Lucas Dina and... Um, it was Alex Moreno on top of that, you know, mm-hmm. bringing in Ross Barkley from out of nowhere after a good season at Luton, I think a bolstering to midfield that was desperately needed. Andre, um, Amadou Anana obviously came in from Everton again, needed. I think midfield was one of the main issues, especially when they lost Kamara towards the end of the season. I think that massively affected them. And obviously now with Dr. Suiz leaving, they needed someone to replace them. And I think, with Unai Emery, I think with another year under his belt and with another year to spend with all the players, I I, I just don't believe they'll have a big of a drop of as people people anticipate. And um, I yes, I think it will won't be enough for top four. Unfortunately, I don't think they have it in them to do two in a row. But mm-hmm. you know, I'll be very interested to see how they do in the Champions League as well. I think that will be very dependent on where they finish in the end. But I think Villa can be a very, once again, a dark horse this season. So for me, them, they've got to be sixth for me. I don't think I can put them any lower than that. Unfortunately for, again, like I said before, United and Spurs, it's very unlucky on you. But at the moment, Villa are ahead of you based on the squad that they have now. By the end of the transfer window, that might not be the case. But for now, I'd have to put them, if I had to put them somewhere, it had to be sixth for me. Who have you got with at fifth? Fifth, I've gone Newcastle, and I've got to be honest, if Newcastle don't get anything but a top six, I think it's 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 a very, very dis- they should be very disappointed. Um no Europe this season, um, because of Man United winning the FA Cup. I just think they've got a good squad together if they can keep everybody fit. Obviously, it was unlucky that Isaac Wilson were both injured at one point this season. But again, I think for me, it's about just keeping the squad together. You know, you've got, obviously, I know you said about um, getting a right winger in because Almiron isn't the guy at the minute. You know, I do like that they have, they got in um, Harvey Barnes from last season. I think he was a great impact sub last season when Gordon wasn't on form. But but yeah, for me, Newcastle with no Europe, I think no excuses with the squad that they have should 
be thinking anything but a top six. You know, you've got Sandro Tonali back, like like you said before. And you know, if you manage to do get Marcus Gay here, I think that's another bit of depth that you could add to the squad. And depth was something that, you know, I don't think Newcastle struggled with too much because of the youngsters that you were able to bring in in the end, like Lewis Miley, like you like you mentioned before. So, yeah, I think Newcastle. I think should be aiming for every anything at least Europa League minimum at least for me. So yeah, fifth place for Newcastle. Okay, I'm going to kick off with fifth. Uh, a, a completely different uh, position to where you put this team. I put Tottenham in fifth, and uh, I don't think they're going to get top four just because that's a Sunday football and the fact that they haven't improved their squad at all. Um, and what I mean, haven't improved their squad. Solanke is an improvement, but it's not a significant improvement. It's not a significant improvement on Richarlison. I think Solanke's a good player. But Richarlison yeah, had a good season last season. We'll see if Solanke can top his goals. I think they need to rejuvenate their whole attack if they want to play this style of football effectively and get a number six as well. Archie Gray isn't gonna is probably going to play, don't get me wrong, but he's not gonna play all the games. Like your midfield options are Saar, Benzenkor, Basuma, and Archie Gray, all behind Madison. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Like we need to see Benton Core eventually make this step up. We need to see Pape Matisse grow into this play. He's young. He can grow. He, he's a good player. But th- that's not the main problem. The main problem is their attack. You got Kulusevski. You cannot play in this system as a winger. He's not quick enough. Brandon Johnson's not good enough. Final third quality. He's not good enough. He's good at the counter attack inside where it's a bit chaotic. That's why he was good at Forest playing on the counter against the big teams. But you can run it behind and that's it. Timo Werner signed for an extra year. You never know what you're going to get with Timo Werner. He'll give you a moment. He'll give you a moment, but he can miss Sitters galore. And I don't get why, it's, instead of actually getting a proper left winger, you decide to extend his loan. Is Mada Solomon actually going to play a part this season or not? Because he was injured last season. Again, who, who somebody's, knows? Average. He's somebody's average. Um, and yeah, striker Richarlison and Solanke. Yeah, you needed a striker, but you also have needed two wingers. The reason why I put them fifth, and yes, I'm criticising them a lot for a team that's put them fifth, not only their defence, because I think their defence is actually good in that high line, but even though I don't think they get enough protection. But also, I don't think any other team has made that step up. I don't think uh, Newcastle, uh, discarded the fact that Newcastle will play one game a week, no other team has really made a step up. I don't think Chelsea made a significant step up. I don't think Man United are just going to be the same for me. Um, and we'll get on to ask that. I'll get on to ask the Villa in a sec, but it's going to be a big opportunity for teams like us, I guess, and Newcastle and Villa to really take this opportunity to of, against the big six teams that will actually drop away from the actual top six itself. Because I can tell you this for sure, it's not going to be the whole big six in the top six. It's not. Someone's going to drop out, whether it's one teams or two teams. We're predicting Man United. We both predicted for Man United to finish outside the top six and. For me, with Tottenham, it's just a case of they will concede goals because they're not going to sign another number six. And they will probably panic by someone throughout the late transfer window. I don't know who it's going to be, but with Tottenham, they don't have any strategy. What they do is just they buy a player for an opportunity. Our Solanke is an opportunity. Archie Gray is an opportunity. These are not signings with a vision, in my opinion. They they signed youngsters before, but they don't improve these young prospects. I fear for Archie Gray's career to just develop because you signed yourself to a team that isn't going to develop you properly. And also, even if you was to exceed your level at Tottenham, you're not going to get sold because the price tag that's going to be asked of you, if you did exceed your level, is going to be insane. So I I fear for that, but listen, it could be a good move. Like Tottenham have improved young players before, but it's been a while. It's been a while since we see that. Listen, they need cover in uh, left back. They've got cover in centre back but they've only got three centre backs that are, that they think highly of Romero, Van der Ven, and Dragerson. Despite Romero's rashness, I do think the systems improved them because he only ever really had a couple of games where he's been properly rushed last season. Yeah. When you, under Conte, it was even worse because there was more pressure on him to defend as they were sitting back a lot. With him and Van der Ven, they're a great partnership, but I just don't think their attack or midfield balance is really going to help them you know, get Champions League football unless obviously the coefficient is five teams this season for the Premier League and we'll see if they get that, get that from the fifth position other than that if it's to just top four this season that will get the Premier League into the Champions League 
then I don't think they'll get it. And I don't think they're going to win the Europa League either. They don't have the squad for it. No, no. And I don't think it'll be an English team at all. I think they're going to get picked apart by another European team like Liverpool did against Atalanta last season. So that's what that's how I see, it. especially with this new format as well. We'll see how they handle more games because these European what, what people forget these European competitions are going to come around more weekly. It's pretty much their own league in midweek, it makes it a bit shit in my opinion. But uh, shall we do my... fourth to first in reverse order then to finish it off? Yep. Uh, should we just say yeah? Should we? We should both. Yeah. Just do uh, four to one in reverse order. Okay, all right. Sh- sh- should I just get my order out first then? Should I just say my whole order? Yeah, yeah. just do, just do all four. Might as well. Okay. At fourth, Aston Villa. At third, yeah. I've got Liverpool. Yeah. And do you know what? I actually think we should leave it there. Just because the whole it'll be a whole new topic. As Okay, yeah, fine, fine. I mean, so, we've got Liverpool in the same place because I've got Liverpool yeah. third. And yeah. I've got Chelsea in fourth. So... I guess I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk I'll, about Villa. I'll let you talk about yeah, Villa first. We'll talk about Villa and Chelsea. Talk about Liverpool together. Um, yeah. With Aston Villa, again, like I said for Tottenham, no one has made that step up to overtake them. Now they have lost Douglas Luiz, and don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't rate Amadou Anada that highly, but they've signed this Enzo guy from Juventus that could be that proper Douglas Lewis replacement. They've kind of just added on top with Anana in that. And I've gone through their transfer window before. Like I think it's a great transfer window. Um, Elling Jr. and Leon Bailey being their right-sided players. Uh, I think they lacked a right-sided player, but if Elling Jr. is their other right-sided player, then they're finding that position. Um, they always, they play a really good formation where it's like a variation of like a 4-4-2 and a 4-2-3-1 at the same time. Uh, Leon Bailey... Uh, if he doesn't get an injury, he'll have another great season. Obviously, with Ollie Watkins there as well. We'll see if Cameron Archer is really going to be their second try striker. Uh, I think uh, Ross Barkley is. I, I really hope he turns up his career. Uh, he had a great season at Luton. He, he was at, on loan at Villa before. Obviously, he was alone before with under Dean Smith. He started off well and kind of dropped off a bit, but I think under this style of football, it really suits him. Uh, this time, so I think it'll be different. I think Morgan Ro- Morgan Rogers will make the step up. Uh, I'd show some good moments at the back in the last season. I think Ian Matson's the a signing that they needed as well. Obviously, we'll see what happens with Luca Digne uh, if he goes to Galatasaray or not. But um, I think they needed a left back regardless. So I think uh, uh, Matson was a good signing. They obviously Diego Carlos is linked with them either way, but they'll find another centre back. Um, Tyron Mings, I think, will be back from injury. Hopefully. Emi Buendia is back from injury. They found out they had a couple of long-term injuries where players are going to come back and stuff. And I think they'll make Champions League again because I think they'll get actually get knocked out of the Champions League quite early and then they'll have to focus on the league and then they'll kick on, well, just mainly having one game a week for most of the season in the end. Um, I don't think they're ready for the, obviously, to whatever they want to do in the Champions League, whether that's to compete for it or not, because you know what Emery's like, he wants to compete for cups. So they're moving in the right direction. It's going to be another great season for them. And it's a whole new Aston Villa thanks to their direction and their coaching, etc. But you got Chelsea at fourth, bro. Thoughts? I do. Um, I don't think there's anything I can say that will justify considering what I saw. Because I saw the preseason game against Manchester City and it was awful mm. what I saw. But under your new manager, you're going to see that, you know, it takes time for them to, you know, it, it, it reminded me of what, I saw last year when Pochettino was trying to gel the team together and, you know, you got a new style of play and you do feel a bit sorry for the Chelsea players, you know, having another new manager come in and trying to teach them a completely new style of play. Um, The only reason why I put them into the top four is because Chelsea have had two very, very poor seasons. And I think maybe now is the time where they take that step forward, you know, and they have the squad to do it, like no excuses, like similar to Newcastle. You know, if you do bring in Neto, you've got Madueke and Neto down that side. On the other side, you've got Mudrick and Sterling. You've got Cole Palmer, who was your star player last season. You've got Nicholas Jackson, if who knows, maybe we'll have confidence to score 10 or plus goals next season. You know, you've got rid of a lot of dead wood because you've had to, because you have so many players on your books. And even now, they still have a lot of players on their books. You know, like you said, I think they have to win the Conference League. I don't think that there's no excuses in that. So, for me, I think Chelsea fans, you've 
you've got it's got to be now. It's got to be now or never, really. Because I know it ends. I know that's a lot of pressure on the new manager, but if you you used to be a club that used to win a lot of trophies all the time and now you've kind of declined and yes that's rich coming from an arsenal fan you know i'd love to have the amount of trophies that you have mm-hmm. but you know at this moment in time i think it's your time to come forward now and i i think they'll just about make that step forward because of the squad that they have and i think enzo moresco will manage to get them to gel quicker than Pochettino did, even though he's a lot younger and inexperienced manager. I just have a feeling, in my opinion, they'll manage to just about get top four. So, yeah, Chelsea in fourth for me. OK, let's talk about the fact that we... I think this is the only other position that we've got, like, as the same. I can't remember yeah. what other team it was. I think it was Brighton. I think we I said think. Brighton, yeah. yeah Brighton. Brighton. Liverpool at third. Um, give me your thoughts on Liverpool first. Yeah, I think beforehand I probably would have put them close to not making top four. But I think if it looks like they might get Super Mendy in, which if they do, that's one of the key signings that they needed. I think they needed a six last year. I think mm-hmm. the six was the main issue. I think they didn't know who to put there. You know, McAllister's good, but does he have the physicality on a week to week basis against the lower teams? Maybe, but, you know, I think over a whole season, I don't think you can have McAllister. As your as your only number six option, I was impressed by that um, the youngster by Chetix, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah, he's been um, injured for a while. Yeah, his he I think he had he he was good obviously before he got injured, and mm. I think Arne Slot it's going to be a big challenge for him. Um, you know, inheriting Klopp's squad, but you know from what I've seen so far, obviously we played them in the US and they played very well against us, and I think you keep the main core of Salah, Diaz, and Nunes. You know. I think they have very good midfields. If, if if options do go wrong, you know, they've got Elliot Curtis Jones, etc. So for me, I think for Liverpool, I don't know what the expectation will be amongst their fan base. I'm sure they'll want to at least bring a trophy home. Maybe at least, whether that's an FA Cup or a Carabao Cup, I think in terms of Europe, I don't know what they'll have to expect in the Champions League. But I think... For Liverpool fans, I don't think they should set their expectations too high. I think they should just see what the new manager can do and just kick on from there. And I think they won't be too disappointed if they finish with the third place. I think it will be more worrying for them if they were, I guess, in danger of finishing outside of the top four. Because I still think, despite the new manager coming in, the squad is good enough to get top four compared to the other teams below them. Yeah, obviously I've got Liverpool third as well. Um, With Liverpool, again, like I said for Tottenham and Aston Villa, no other team has really made that uh, jump up to even overtake them. And also, look, look, let's like be honest. Even if they didn't make a DM signing, uh, which they need to, uh, they've still got Salah, Van Dijk, and Trent and Allison. There, there's not many teams like below them. In fact, there's no team below them that has a player that's better than any of them. And in their position, is, yeah, 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 in their position specifically. Um, Van Dijk was still have it. He's still got years to go as a centre back. He's a centre back. He's, he could go on for years. And uh, as long as they keep Canate fit, they'll have a good centre back partnership. Obviously, they've got Gomez and uh, Kwanzaa to come in for them uh, with the right back situation. If Trent's not there, then Connor Bradley's there. Connor Bradley broke through last season and he did really well. Obviously, we'll see if Trent plays in midfield this season because I have rumours about Trent maybe moving to midfield under Ardy Slot. Oh, yeah, that would be interesting, actually. I think that yeah. would more depend on if they bring another person in, but. Yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting to see. I think Trent, I think, I don't think he's played a game of pre season yet, so I think it'll be hard to mm. tell, but I think we'll know towards a few games into the season. Yeah, that like obviously Liverpool will want to win titles and challenge for titles in the Premier League. The, the, what's like bringing them away from that is not only is it a new era and a new manager, but if I was to look at how they didn't win the league last season, it was mainly because of lack of clinicality. Obviously, the, the defensive aspect went downwards as well, but. If you look at their attack, Joss is really good, but he's injury prone. Mohamed Salah is fantastic elite player, but he's going to come to the end of his career, so he can't do it all on his own. So Darwin Nunes and Luis Diaz you need to step up. Now, Luis Diaz is a lot of speculating around his future. Darwin Nunes is very erratic, misses a lot of chances, a lot. Like he, he has his chaos moments, but the thing is with these chaos footballers, they're not consistent. 
It's all about consistency. It doesn't matter about the style of your uh, style of who you are, the profile of play of who you are. If you're consistent, you'll get rewarded with praise. Darwin Nunes is not consistent. He'll score a goal here and there, and they'll be like, how can you doubt Nunes? And then he'll go on a run of games where he's missing sitters, and then he'll get a bunch of excuses. With Luis Diaz, he had a poor season last season, and I think he needs to step up. Uh, with uh, Cody Gakpo, we'll see if he can carry on that Euro form uh, into the Premier League season. But this is the thing, these attackers that I'm looking at, only Salah has got that elite elite stuff with his attacking quality. Like That's the thing, Like if you want to win leagues, go improve your attack, go get a DM, and your left back situation is questionable because Robertson had a bad season last season. So we'll see how you approach that, and especially in this new system. Uh, and you got to probably sign maybe another centre back, maybe another centre back to play alongside Van Dijk, just because Canate is injury prone. And Gomez and Quanta are, are not quite the level that is going to be the same. I think Gomez would, does well in full back, but not not in the back four in the centre back. He hasn't done well there for about four or five years now. And uh, with Quanta, he's he he's young. He's young. He's not ready to play week in, week out. Uh, but that is the fourth and third spot. It obviously comes down to second and first. The title challenges. Jay, go first. Who have you got in second and first? I've had to... I think two years ago, I think I predicted Man City to win. And um, a lot's changed since then. But I think this year might be the year. So I've gone with Manchester City seconds and Arsenal in first. Now, I'll start off with City, of course. Um, City are one of the best teams in Europe, undoubtedly, for many, many reasons. Last season, they only won the Premier League. Now, you know, I think if you Pep Guardiola... If it is your last year, what would you want more? Do you want another Premier League title or do you want, I guess, all the others? And for me, I think Man City will put more into the Champions League this year than previous years. Because if, again, if he is leaving, I'm back, I might be completely wrong. But I think Man City will be disappointed with their cup runs. You know, losing to Manchester United in the FA Cup final, their best rivals, they'll be disappointed with that. I think they got knocked out by Newcastle in the Carabao Cup last year. Yeah. Um, they want to go to at least the final in that. And I think they'll have such, such high expectations. I think the Cups will be more important than the league this year. Not saying that they won't obviously forget about the league completely, but I do think, you know, the squad's obviously a bit imbalanced now because obviously Julian Alvarez has just left. Who who, who they're going to bring in to replace him is still, um, still a question mark on that. Their squad is still amazing, you know. They've got the best depth in the world, you know. They've got the best goal scorer in the world in Haaland. They've got the best, one of the best midfielders in the world in De Bruyne still. So, you know, it's very, very hard to bet against them. But I guess the reason why Arsenal, I put Arsenal first is because, you know, obviously we came so close last season. I was very disappointed that we didn't win it. There was a moment that I knew that it was done. And I think it was the Fulham game where we drew. I think it was, oh, sorry, we lost the game 2-1 at Craven Cottage. And I said to myself, OK, I kind of saw this coming, but let's see what we do in the summer and let's see if we can kick on again this season. You know, I watched one of my pre-season games, I think it was two days ago when we played Leverkusen. And I saw that we looked somewhat ready, but obviously it's pre-season. You can't really tell much. I feel like our transfer business has been okay so far. You know, surprisingly, I'm one of the fans that doesn't think we need a striker to get over the line. Considering what, and the reason is considering what we did last season, I don't think goal scoring was the main issue. We scored a record amount of goals last season. I think the main issue was when we went to the lower teams, weren't able to break them down as 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 good as Man City can, because Man City, like us. Um, a lot of the lower teams are afraid of us. So they always put 10 behind the ball and we're just having to work to break them down. And against, for example, you guys, I know you came to the Emirates and you won 2-0. You sat a low block and you managed to beat us by that and we weren't able to break you down. Man City don't have that issue. Now, you know, we've got a couple, of, we've got 
a couple of players in. You've got Calafiori, who is the defender, which we needed, who can play left back, which we needed based on what we saw last season. You know, the squad depth is better than ever before. If we get Marino, then it's a step forward. Whether it's enough, I don't know. I know Kingsley Coman's available today, I just heard. If you manage to get him on the right-hand side, maybe that's the defining step. But I feel like consistency is the first thing we need in order to win the title. And if we're able to break down teams better than we did last season, I think that will be the main stumbling block. But I think this season, I think we'll do a lot better than we did last season and we'll just about win the league. I don't think it will be we'll go miles ahead of them. I don't think that Man City will have a massive drop off either, but it will be at least one or two points in it. But I have to back my team, so I have to say Arsenal win the league. I think you mainly done that to back your team because here's why I, I've gone with the opposite. Yeah, I've gone obviously opposite. I've gone with Arsenal second, yeah. Manchester City first. The reason why I've gone with Manchester City first is because Man City will never ever just focus on one competition. They will never ever do that. They've they've proven. Yeah, I really agree. Up. They will focus on every competition, like the Carabao Cup. They don't care about anymore. The reason why they don't care about anymore is because they won the Carabao Cup year in year out to build a mentality. And once they built that mentality of winning four in a row, they bunned it off. They lost to Southampton the previous year by playing the second team, and with Newcastle by doing the same. They don't care about the Carabao Cup anymore. With the FA Cup, they'll they'll do it to get through it almost because they they count that as important, but they don't count yeah. it as important as Champions League and the Premier League. They're not going to win the Champions League this season as much as they want to. They will try and do their best to go far in it. But yeah, I think they will blatantly lose the Champions League. Just the fact Real Madrid's squad is absolutely ridiculous. And they've got Carlo Ancelotti. They're just going to let them let them play. Mbappe's there and all that. Um, with Manchester City, they're never going to let that crown drop for as long as Pep is there, in my opinion. And the reason why I like... A reason why I think um, Arsenal, for example, like, if... <sighs> If, if you don't need a striker, then your wingers have to step up with a, with a lot more goals. Even though you did score a lot of goals last season, but for somebody like for somebody, for somebody somebody like a Martinelli, if he wants to keep his start in place, he's going to have to step up. Or Trossard will start yeah, week in week out. a massive season for him. Yeah, or Trossard will start week in week out. And he will have to become the main guy on the left. But Kaiosaka had a bad start to the season last season, but he had a great end. He needs to just have a great season like he has in previous times, like two years ago, like three years ago. And he's still one of the best wingers in the league, don't get me wrong, but it's just from last season, he'll have to go back to the normal Bakaya Saka that we know, uh, just as neutrals and just as football fans in general. It's just being consistent week in, week out. And I think he I think he will. I think he'll have a great season. Um, but I don't think you could go in with Havertz and Jesus as your number nine options and maybe Trossard in a force nine option again as your options to win the Premier League. I still think maybe it's not even about signing a superstar. It's maybe it's just signing a different option. Like, it doesn't even have to be some guy who's going to be like some regular starter. I think it's going to be someone that will have to chip in, but just a different kind of number nine. So let's say Havertz still plays a part. I think Havertz, um, you cannot play the guy in midfield at all. The guy is not a mid guy, cannot play in midfield. Like, the guy's not a creative number 10 naturally. He's a guy who you can find it in the box and he might finish it now and then. He's not, I'm not going to call him clinical, but he's more of a great a guy who can have this great movement in the box and he'll be able to finish. The guy's a midfielder. He's, he's never going to be, never going to solve your problems really. And if you play him in midfield, it, that's why you didn't break teams down at the, the start of last season, in my opinion. I would even say in the game against us, as much as we defended quite well at the time, there was actually quite a few chances you missed. Like, he's, he's missed the quite yeah. a few chances there. Like, that's what I mean. Like, even if it's just an impact sub, get a different number nine. Someone different to Jesus and Havertz. Someone who has more of an instinct in the box. I think you guys don't even need a regular starter like that. It's just an impact player. So are you going to say something? Yeah, no, I was I was just going to say, um, I agree that Havertz, because he's such a multi... He complained, obviously, he played in the number nine and he played in the number eight towards the start of the season. I think he wasn't used to the eight... He didn't have to spend enough time in training, learning in the eight last season, which is why I think he started so bad. And, you know, we didn't exactly get the number eight to replace Shaka when he left. I think that was why there was so much expectation on him to replace Shaka. I think that's what slightly played a part. I agree that Jesus isn't the clinical striker that everybody wants. So, yes, there is an argument to get in a player in, in that position, but 
you know, what striker wants to come into the to Arsenal to play as a squad player? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, but a lot of strikers are going to want to come to Arsenal because yeah, that, that that that's, yeah, that that's true. I agree with that, but you know, the strikers market isn't exactly the there's not like exactly strikers on the market. Obviously, we spoke about Osman earlier, but you know, it to come. I'm not saying that strikers don't want to come to Arsenal. It's just getting the right profile, and I guess having them be a squad player is very hard for them to do because I think every player wants to play. So I don't know if we're going to be able to find that player. I hope we do. Um, but I trust my manager if he wants to stick with Habits and Jesus because based on what I saw last season, I have no reason to say otherwise. I think you do with Jesus. I think we're Habits. I, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, Jesus scored what? I guess he was injury prone, but he chipped him when he needed to. Not saying he doesn't need to do more, but... You know, I I can hope that he can do well next season, this season. Otherwise, next season we are going to start to have to ask questions. I think Calafiori. I don't know if he's going to be a good signing because I only watch him in the Euros. I Neither think do I. Playing, playing him as a left back, we'll see if he can defend better in wide areas. He's mainly a centre back. I know you guys play four centre backs and Ben White inverts and stuff, uh, but we'll see about that. That's what up in the air. I think. I don't, I don't know whether you needed a defender, but it adds to your quality of you guys already having a very good defence anyway. Gabriel and Saliba are probably the best centre-back partnership in the league, etc. Uh, you got that Marino will give you good midfield balance. I think that would be a good signing. But I still think that you're one attacker away. Which is one. Like, like, even if it's like you yeah, play which is Havertz. Fair. Um, but if, fair. if it's like you play Havertz and Jesus and you sign a sick left winger or... Even if it's not like a striker that's like mainstream or anything, I'm just, uh, you just scout. If you had scouting someone that's like a gem and he comes in and he does well, that's why scouts are paid their money. You go and yeah. scout someone. like, And if, if all the strikers in the market are going to be priced out of their thing, like Jokerez or Osimhen or even Tony or whatever, whoever it is, whoever it is and they're going to be priced out, you go and scout someone to come in. You can't, I don't think you could go with the exact same attack and try and do the same thing as last season. I think it's going to be very heavily reliant on the right-hand side because I think Ben White is not underrated, but within your fan base, you guys talk a lot about the same players. Ben White is very key. And I think it, like ben, that ben White, Erdogan, second partnership, like that trio is really good. Um, but I think you can't go with the exact same attackers and just then kick on, try and kick on from there because you didn't need to... Like, a defender was probably needed in terms of depth. Don't get me wrong, but... yeah. You guys already have a sick defense. Your defense is sick, but yeah, I, I, I think the only reason, thing. yeah, I, I think the only reason why we signed Calafiori is just to get a left-footed player on the left-hand side in case yeah, Gabriel okay. gets injured, for example, or mm. someone to come in on the left-hand side if Shinchenko yeah. is like not on form or if Kiri mm. leaves. So that that for yeah. me was, I think, the only reason why Cali we signed Calafiori in the end. Okay, all right. Well, listen, we we've, we've done our Premier League predictions. We've reached there, and I hopefully you guys have enjoyed that video. An hour and a half, a, a lot of different predictions. I think both of our uh, predictions will end up being controversial in the end. Uh, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's interesting. It was very interesting. Um, but yeah, guys, I hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. First of all, go and follow Jay on TikTok. It says it right there. AFC Jay Jones X11 on TikTok as well. Uh, but the road to 500 subscribers on this channel. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you are new. The social medias are in the description and they're right at the bottom. GVO, Mike's on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok if you want to follow me. And the email for the inquiries. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow, probably, in a bit.